Welcome to Bunts Creek, Maryland in the AMA National Championship 125 and 500 motocross. Hello everyone, I'm Larry Hoffman, reporting from Bunts Creek, Maryland for Power Sports Productions of California. Let's look at the standings in this next to last round in the 125 championships. Mike Kudrowski leads Guy Cooper by one point and Cooper is not real optimistic. The last couple of races weren't going too good. Uh, last weekend, um, I felt like it was going my way. I didn't get either one of the starts, worked to the front and uh, the first moto, the uh, broke the cases and DNF that moto and the second moto came back to win it but um, that still just got me back to level with Mike Kudrowski and now it's two more races four motos and I'm just going to try to win both motos today and um, Interdale is not the race I want to go into I wanted to go into it with a big uh, healthy margin because it tracks tough for me but we'll see what we can do now just race by race I'm not very good about looking at where other riders are if I start looking where everyone else is at I don't ride myself 100%, so um, my my strategy is going to be to go to win the race, and because um, uh, you know Mike's going to be up front. He's a good, solid rider. He's top five most of the races, so for me, it's going to have to be to win. It's I was about 62, 63 points out of the lead, and you know I just kept on working hard. I knew that eventually, you know, I could get the lead, and a lot of people probably thought I wouldn't get it, but um, I just kept on working hard every week and you know, trying to get more consistent in my results and the last two races, uh, Binghamton and Steel City I've won, so uh, now I'm one point in the lead for the overall championship and I'm feeling pretty good right now. In the driver's seat, uh, uh, it's yours to win or lose now. It yeah, I mean, you can either win it or you can get second and I sure don't want to get second. I want to defend my title the second time in the, you know, second year and uh, I'm going to do everything I can to win this championship. Kodrowski is cool and confident, but what about Honda's other big gun, Jean-Michel Bale? Oh, I feel very good. It's very good to come back, to come back in a race. I stayed two months with almost no race, so it's very good to, to ride a little bit. And uh, the truck here is very nice. It's a little bit like your grand truck, so um, I, I feel very good. We're set now for the first moto, and here is an interesting development. There is Kodrowski coming up on the line. We've just received word that uh, Honda's Dave Arnold talked to Bale and said, Look, Kodrowski's in front. Give him a chance if he gets out in front. And Bale apparently has said no. And uh, Dave Arnold has locked Bale's bike in the Honda van. So Jean-Michel Bale will not even start. An interesting development. And Arnold, who is a gentleman, and I've known this guy for years, is very upset about this. But it's going to be on Kodrowski's shoulders to try to hold on to that one-point lead. And Arnold wanted to take away any chance that Bale might try to take it away from him. So, and there is Matasevich, cool, cocky, confident, and we're set to go, ladies and gentlemen. First 125 moto, they are underway. Again, keep in mind, Cooper one point down from Kodrowski, and he's got to move up in front, and that's exactly what Cooper's done in the center of the, of the pack. Guy Cooper is out in front on the factory Suzuki. Stillwater, Oklahoma native. Cooper in front, and that is Kevin Walker on the uh, Yamaha Gear Scott-supported Support ride in second spot. Who the heck is Walker? He's out of Penhook, Virginia. And Matasevich coming up in third. Well, Guy Cooper, who, who looked like he was under a lot of pressure and talked like it in that interview you just heard a moment ago, has taken the, the lead early now, took the whole shot, and is out in front. Kodrowski mid-pack, we understand at this point. And there is Matasevich on the outside. Matasevich riding like a wild man trying to get around Walker and he's got him. Matasevich passes early, goes into second place. Cooper in front. Matasevich, the young kid from La Habra Heights, California, in second. You saw him a moment ago with a goatee now. They call him the chicken man, but that is not a reflection of his aggressive riding style. Cooper in front. Matasevich second, and we've got a race, folks. Bud's Creek, Maryland, Potomac Speedway. The next to last 125 moto of the year. Cooper, one point down. Oh, Cooper slides there, looks around behind him. Matasevich is right on his back tire. Power Sports Productions of California bringing you this AMA Motocross National. The next to last one of the year, the 125 championship. And Guy Cooper is in front right now and unofficially is leading the point standings now if he can stay in this position with Kodrowski finishing behind him. 20 points for a win, look at the crowd. 
about 10,000 fans, 10 to 12,000 fans watching this battle. And Kudrowski in the mid in mid pack is watching it also. But Cooper and Matasevich are going out at hammer and tong. It is the Sport Channel coverage of this AMA National Motocross Championship. We're on every Sunday night at 9.30, nationwide Eastern Standard Time. We're seeing in Europe also, and you folks over in Europe are seeing a knockdown battle, knockdown drag out battle between two of the stars of American 125 motocross. Matasevich, two-time West Coast Supercross champion. Cooper has yet to win a major title. And remember that Suzuki has not won the 125 championship since 1982. The, oh, he's down! Cooper goes down! And Matasevich takes the lead. Cooper got out of, out of form going up that hill. The rear end started swapping back and forth, and he went down, and it is Jeff Matasevich in front. Matasevich on the gas. Matasevich is in front, and Cooper is right back behind him again. Well, I don't believe this. Cooper got up and started fighting back up and has gone back into second spot behind Matasevich. Back in the back, it's Kudrowski battling behind with Larocco running about fourth at this point, but right now, it's Matasevich completely in control and out in front. Here's a replay, and that, look at that, out completely out of control. Cooper tried to stay on the gas, then backed off momentarily, and the bike threw him down to the ground. You can see him getting up there but it's too little too late. Here's Cooper back in the fray. And now we're gonna see what Guy Cooper is made of. Test his metal as the old saying goes. Matasevich is in front and Cooper is right back behind him again. Bud's Creek, Maryland, Potomac Speedway. The next to last 125 moto of the year. Cooper, one point down. And now Matasevich has got to watch from the arms getting pumped up and, and getting nervous. Look at the crowd, cheer him on and wave him on. Look at him, this is a knockdown drag out battle. And Cooper is back on the back tire of Matasevich. Look at the crowd, cheering him on. Cooper moving up on Matasevich. Matasevich earlier putting the pressure on Cooper. It worked. Cooper went down. And now Cooper is back on Matasevich. And we've got a battle, folks. Matasevich looks nervous. He looks to be getting, making mistakes. And Cooper goes by on the inside. The crowd can't believe it. Cooper went down as if he was knocked down by Mike Tyson. He has fought his way back up and has taken the lead. Look at this. Jeff Matasevich has, can only sit in second spot now. Unless he puts the pressure back on Cooper, and you're gonna hear money's worth out of this one, folks. A beautiful fall day here in Maryland, Bud's Creek, Maryland. And the 125 and 500 National Motocross. But it is Guy Cooper, a Cinderella story in this first moto. He came into it one point down from Kudrowski, and he's gone back in front after falling in front of Matasevich. And Matasevich looks to be falling off the pace. Listen to the crowd cheer him on. This, you gotta cheer for Cooper. For years, he traveled around with his beautiful wife and slept in the Hotel Dodge, as Tony DiStefano used to say, which means he slept in his van at night. Look at this. And he is out in front at this point. And there it looks like Kudrowski is coming up. Yes, Mike Kudrowski has gone to third. Now remember, Kudrowski, the word is he is signing with Kawasaki, going back to Kawasaki for next year. And Honda, the word we have, has decided to sit out the 125 Nationals next year. And I should say that I do not know if that is a firm decision. But uh, the situation is that Kudrowski is making his swan song for Honda. Well, we'll see what happens in the mid part of this, this uh, first 125 moto here at Bud's Creek. One twenty-five cc, liquid cool, two strokes, putting out well over thirty horsepower, which is phenomenal. 
They put out about 20 10 years ago, and they are usable horses. Let me point that out, ladies and gentlemen. Check that. Number one is Kodrowski. Number 20 is Matasevich, and number four is Cooper. Let's stay with this battle, ladies and gentlemen. You are seeing some of the best motocross action of the year. Number four, Cooper. Number one, Kudrowski. And number 20, Matasevich. And as these guys go out and hammer and tong. Mike Kudrowski trying to hold on to that slim one-point lead over Cooper. And Cooper is in front of him. And there, it's a battle. It's a heck of a battle between Honda and Suzuki. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, Kudrowski defending 125 national champion on the factory Honda, switching to Kawasaki next year. Cooper's been with Suzuki now, and he takes the lead and the win. Cooper wins moto number one. Kudrowski is second. Tishner comes out of nowhere in third. Matasevich face to fourth, and Mike Larocco in fifth. Well, you got your money's worth out of that one, ladies and gentlemen. No question about it. We'll be back with more exciting action in just a moment. Welcome back to Bud's Creek, Maryland, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Larry Huffman, and coming up, the 500 National Moto, the first moto in the 500 Championships, Ward Lee Stanton, Johnny O'Mara third. There is the O Show. Could be his last year of racing competitively. And there's Jeff Warden earlier, a very interesting in-depth interview on Jeff's thoughts. You know, I got two races left. Um, anything can happen. Yeah, I feel really confident riding the bike now, and we got the bike set up really well. And um, I just got to go out there and try to win the race and not do anything stupid, just stay on the bike, basically. And if uh, Stan's having a good day and I just seem to be struggling, there's no use of going over my head trying to beat him and uh, going down. But, you know, I don't like being beat, and that's hard to hold back. So, you know, I'm out there to win. Well, I have a uh, year left for my contract next year, and, you know, I seem to be winning races and championships, so I'm not ready to retire yet. And uh, I don't think they want me to. And, you know, this year, if I win the 500s, that'll be seven national championships tied with Ricky. So, you know, that'll make me real happy. I'd like to beat that. So, I, you know, I got next year to do it. And, you know, you just never know what's going to happen. Just tell me what happened last week. Start there. Start out the day, felt, well, overall, you know, fairly well. Went out for the second, or first moto. And Wardy pretty much beat me. You know, he was riding a pretty flawless race. You know, and I just wasn't feeling that comfortable on the track. And went into the second moto and knew I had to win. You know, that's what basically what we've been doing all year. He's been winning the first moto. I've been winning the second moto. And taking the overall, we've just been splitting points. And I guess it just started the race. And I'll be honest with you, I don't, really don't know what happened. We just started the race. And uh, be honest with you, I really don't know what happened. I just went down really hard on a set of uphill doubles. And uh, pretty much, you know, knocked the, the beans out of me and didn't know what, what happened or what went on. Well, I just got to go out here and win every moto for the next two races. You know, if I can't win the championship, I'd like to win the last two races, and that's what I'm going to shoot for. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to wish any bad luck on anybody if something happens to, you know, somebody else's bike. You know, that's, that'd be great for me. But uh, in a short season like this with six races, it just takes one screw up and you're out. And unfortunately, that happened to me. You know, it's, it's been a good year two out of the three championships and you know we're still sh we're still shooting for the third yeah. you know it's not out of existence you know things have happened in the last races to, and people have won championships so we're still going for it you know i still busted my butt all week you know got recouped a couple of days and then busted my butt the last three days and you know i feel i'm ready so all i gotta do is go out and try to win these last few races stanton suffered a concussion and dnf and uh, he's got to play catch up. All right, we're set to go. The 500 National Motocross on the line and underway. And let's see if it'll be Stanton or Ward or Johnson or O'Mara. It is a Honda. Looks like Jeff Stanton snatched that whole shot as the dust comes up here in Maryland. A warm day, and it is Stanton out in front. Factory Honda. And Stan is being chased by Gene Nomick. 
Looks like in second spot, Wardy coming up, Johnson coming up. But it looks like Stanton in front, but they're right behind him. Johnny O'Mara in mid-pack. Wardy trying to move up on Stanton. And Onik. The first one of the first 500 moto. We might point out in America, ladies and gentlemen, for you watching in Europe, the first half of the season is 125, 250. Then that championship has decided the 250. And then it is the remainder of the 125 and the 500 class. So this is the second half and the twilight, actually, of the motocross season. Whoa, look out. It looks like uh, Wardy goes into seconds. Stanton in front. Looks like Jeffs comes up to, comes up to second. That is Jeff Ward. And that is Jeff Stanton. And boy, have we seen this before. Ward and Stanton going at it. Johnny O'Mara moving up into fifth spot. And Jeff Ward is definitely on the gas. Jeff Stanton coming off a very bad get off. You don't go to the hospital unless you're hurt, and he was hurt last week. And here comes Jeff Ward. And here comes Ricky Johnson. Johnson, who may be in his last year racing professionally, there's been talk of him, of him going to Europe. Had lunch with Roger DeCoster earlier this year, and DeCoster confided in me, we're not sure about Johnson. But Ricky has fought his way back up despite that wrist injury incurred early in the year. He has not been 100%. Johnny O'Mara trying to move up. The battle is up in front, however, ladies and gentlemen, between Stanton and Ward. And Ricky Johnson carrying number 13. Johnson still looks like he's having some problems. But it is, uh, well, here's Johnson, let's watch him. This kid has had a lot of injuries, suffered a dislocated hip back in 1983 at the St. Louis National. He told me, he said it was the most excruciating pain he would, could ever imagine, and there was some talk that he would never walk again. But Johnson came back, he's a tough cookie. Stanton Ward, here's Jeff Stanton, and here's Jeff Ward, and he's coming up on Stanton. Well, Ward is riding somewhat conservatively. He's got an edge from last week's race when Stanton DNF'd, and Jeff is a very smart, savvy rider. Been around for a long time. So he's gonna put the pressure on Stanton, but not do anything stupid. Wardy's looking for that champion. Oh, and Stanton's down! Stanton washes out a simple washout. There's a lap rider going by, and there's Ward. Jeff Ward has taken the lead. Jeff Stanton had to feel the pressure, and he made a mistake, a simple mistake. We're going to take a look at that crash. Here comes Johnson. Johnson got by Stanton, so it is Ward, Johnson, and Stanton at this point. We're going to take a look back at that at that fall on Stanton. There was no reason. Look at here. He comes around a simple, and just the front wheel just washes out, and Stanton goes down on his head. Gets back up again. The bike kills the engine, and Jeff Ward is out in front. So the Ward fans have something to cheer about, and another tough break for Stanton. Oh boy, Jeff Ward has gone out in front. Let's see if Johnson can hold on to second. There's Johnson, Ricky Johnson. And Johnson and Ward have had a rivalry over the years. And now it is Johnson's turn to try to catch Ward. I don't know if he can do it. So Stanton drops to third. Ward gets the lead. And it looks like Wardy is going for another championship this year, but this is not the last race, remember. The last race of the season, but Wardy is piling up the points. Jeff Ward leading, ladies and gentlemen. Johnson in second spot. Stanton trying to scratch claw and fight his way back up there to get a shot at Wardy. Stanton cannot afford to give this moto to Ward. 
And that's exactly what he did. Let's see what happens now in the, in the final moments of this first 500 National Moto. There's Stanton, number two, trying to find his way back up. Jeff Ward doing a beautiful job. Wardy is a seasoned, seasoned veteran. And he will take any opportunity he can. He has kept himself physically and mentally sharp in a career that's spanned over 20 years. Now it looks like Johnson is getting the pressure from Stanton. Larry Huffman calling the action. There's Johnson in second spot behind Ward. We're covering it for Power Sports Productions of California. Stanton coming up behind Johnson. Now these guys are teammates. Remember what happened in the first moto when Bale refused Honda team manager Dave Arnold's admonition to, to back off Kudrowski. And so Arnold locked, it the word we have, that Arnold locked Bale's CR125 in the trailer, in the truck, wouldn't let him race. These guys are friends. Johnson knows that he has no shot at the national championship. He is not going to battle and put and cause a problem for, for Stanton, but Johnson's not going to move over either. I think that I think you're going to see an interesting battle toward the end of this moto. Wardy completely in control out in front, and, jo and Jeff is, is riding a very conservative race as he laps a, a, a slower rider, a lap rider. Here's Johnson in second, and there's Stanton in third. So let's see what happens between Stanton and Johnson. Johnson will not take Stanton out and vice versa. They are teammates and friends. Jeff Ward heading for the first moto victory. Can he hold on to it? That's the question. Bud's Creek, Maryland. Potomac Speedway, folks. And there's Jeffrey going on to the tour of the checkered flag. Johnson in second. That's the, the move over flag. You folks in Europe right there telling a rider that he's about to be lapped. Here's Johnson. And Stan right behind him. There's Stan. All right, we got a race for second. Stan needs these points desperately. Says earlier in the interview, you heard him. I've won two out of three championships. I want this one, but I, it's going to be tough. The DNF last last week. Jeff Stanton trying to catch Johnson and then go after Wardy. And they're all looking for the white flag and then the checkered flag. There's Wardy on the lime green Kawasaki, the KX500. These are so fast. These are called the top fuel dragsters of motorcycle motocross racing, the open class motocrossers. Had a chance to ride one a couple of years ago, a, a big Honda down in Mexico, and good Lord, it scared me. They are so fast, and these riders are so good to be able to control them. Well, Stanton has got by Johnson for second. Johnson apparently has fallen, and Stanton now is, is going to try to make a race of it. Here's Ward, and Ward has got the signal from his mechanic that Stanton's closing on him. The final moments of this 500 moto, and suddenly Stanton is back in contention. You had a flash of Stanton there, and there, nope, the checkered flag is out, and Wardy wins it. And Stanton cruises across the line in second. He is not happy. A tough break for Stanton. Fell while leading. He is out of it. But he still manages to salvage second. And here's Johnson. And Johnson limps across the line, apparently in third. Big Rick. Yep, Johnson's third. Omera fourth. And Nomic, who was second momentarily in the first lap, finishes fifth. So we'll be back with a second 125 championship. That's a promoter's private car. No, I'm just kidding. That's a, a mud bog truck giving an example of running through the mud in a truck with fire coming out of the headers. 10,000 people here. Beautiful October day. We'll be back with more action from Bud's Creek, Maryland. Welcome back to Bud's Creek, Maryland, ladies and gentlemen. We are set now for the second 125 moto. Larry Huffman on the microphone here on a beautiful October day. Power Sports Productions of California presenting it, and we're set to go. Now remember, Cooper won the first moto. Kudrowski was second. Let's see what happens in the second moto. Out in front, it looks like a Suzuki. It, yes, it is. On the middle, it's Cooper. In fact, looks like three Suzukis. Running in the top three, that is Cooper, looks like uh, Mike Luraco and their teammate Denny Stevenson behind him. Then in fourth spot, Matasevich. 
And Kudrowski trying to move up. Now, unofficially, Cooper has gone out in front of the 125 championship. One point behind going into the last moto. Kudrowski was second, Cooper in front. But anything can happen. Right now, Cooper, who's looking to give Suzuki their first national championship in the 125 class since 1982, is out in front but battling with Kudrowski for the overall. And here comes Cooper. Number four, Cooper, looks like Stevenson. Uh, LaRocco battling for second, but Matasevich right behind him. And Cooper holds on to the lead. Guy Cooper still wanted Oklahoma in front, trying to open up that lead on that RM125. This is for all the gold, ladies and gentlemen, getting down to the last of this series with one round remaining. Cooper riding a flawless race, 29 years old. Stillwater, Oklahoma. Been around for a while. Outdoor motocross at its best. If you've never been to an outdoor motocross, I suggest you check it out because it's exciting. Take your girlfriend out there and have yourself a wild time. Cooper looking awfully good in front, but there's Kudrowski running in fifth now. Mike LaRocco trying to reel in. Number four, Guy Cooper. LaRocco, number 10, right behind him. Suzuki, full factory teammates. And looks to be Stevenson right behind. Denny Stevens, that's number 27 from Omaha, running right behind them. The crowd cheering them on. They remember that knockdown, drag-out battle in the first photo between Kudrowski and Cooper. Now they want to give Kudrowski, the crowd is exhorting Kudrowski to move up and battle Cooper. These guys are both tough. Five of them so close, you could throw a king-size sheet over them. Battling for the lead, and anybody could take it. But right now, you got to put your money on young Guy Cooper. Well, not so young. He just turned 20, 29 this year, back in February. Rider down. That looks like uh, Matasevich, number 20. The chicken man goes down. Potomac Speedway, Butts Creek, Maryland, here for the 125 championship today. And there is Kudrowski trying desperately to move up. Robert Cooper won the first moto. He is trying right now to stay out in front of a hard charging Mike Larocco. And Morocco is keeping the pressure on Cooper, and the momentum of that battle should pull him away from Kudrowski. They're about to lap a slower right. Cooper riding a flawless race so far. That's a three-digit number of a lap rider. Oh, a battle for second. Look out here. That is Kudrowski has come out of nowhere, was running fifth, and now is up to third, and right on the back wheel of number 10, Mike LaRocco. Whoa! LaRocco almost goes down, and Kudrowski is on him like a dog on a piece of meat. Kudrowski, the national champion, wants that title back, and Cooper is determined to give it to Suzuki. And we're in the second and final 125 moto. And now LaRocco has got to try to hold off Kudrowski. And Kudrowski's all over the track trying to get around him. Kudrowski on the right. LaRocco on the inside. The Honda trying to get in front. LaRocco parks it. Kudrowski backs off and goes after him again. Guy Cooper is up in front. He knows a battle is going on behind him as LaRocco provides a rear guard fight to try to hold off Kudrowski. And if Kudrowski gets around LaRocco, look out, Cooper. He's going to be coming on. And there's Kudrowski on the inside trying to get a wheel. And nope, LaRocco says no. The Rock of LaPorte, Indiana. Mike LaRocco, full-fledged factory Suzuki rider. The teammate of Guy Cooper as they fly over these jumps. 
Kudrowski all over the track, almost landing on, on Larocco. Kudrowski riding like a madman, and he goes around him. A beautiful pass. Kudrowski almost landed on Larocco. Larocco backed off for just a second, and Kudrowski went around him and into the second spot. And now Kudrowski is going. Let's look again. Now watch, watch the landing. There is Larocco, and they're all oh, almost on top of him. Kudrowski. That had to scare Mike LaRocco's ancestors. It scared him enough to back out of the, to get out of the line. And there goes Kudrowski by on the inside. Beautiful camera work, a beautiful pass by Kudrowski. And so now, ladies and gentlemen, the battle is set. Cooper in front and Kudrowski going after him. Suzuki against Honda. The defending champion in second spot has got to pass and catch and pass Cooper. But LaRocco ain't giving up. Look at LaRocco stay right on Kudrowski's back tire. Hassling him, trying to get Kudrowski to make a mistake. Cooper setting a blistering pace. You gotta wonder how long he can keep this up. There's Kudrowski and there is LaRocco. Cooper goes by and Kudrowski is trying to reel him in. Kudrowski has one thing on his mind. I gotta catch Cooper. Look at the crowd get into it. 10,000 fans here. Potomac Speedway in Maryland. The next to last 125 national championship. And these guys are virtually tied up. If Kudrowski passes Cooper, unofficially Kudrowski will hold on to the lead by one point and he came into this race with a one point lead. Cooper looks around him. Kudrowski right behind him. Four or five bike legs back. Mike LaRocco in second, that's the move over flag to get the lap riders out of the way. Two different lines, look at the line. Cooper on the left, Kudrowski on the right. Cooper stalls for just a moment, and Kudrowski moves right up next to him. Over the jumps, Cooper may be getting tired. Kudrowski looking for a hole, looking for a place to pass. I don't believe that the pace that these two young athletes are setting. Guy Cooper and Mike Kudrowski going at it, hammer and tongue. The crowd cheering them on. Kudrowski riding like a madman, going to the outside, taking a different line. Cooper drives to the outside. And here's Kudrowski passing. He's got him. Kudrowski has taken the lead. Mike Kudrowski has gone out in front. And now it's Guy Cooper's turn to catch up, play catch up to Kudrowski. Cooper, I don't know what's going on. He's going extremely wide. There's LaRocco in third. Now, LaRocco, if he, if he takes the team manager's advice, he will not try to pass Cooper because LaRocco does not have a chance at the national championship. Cooper does. He is still very much in the running. Kodrowski waves to the crowd. He's got to be cocky. He's got to be very confident. And he is pulling away from Cooper. The checkered flag, Kudrowski takes it. And he is ecstatic. Unofficially, ladies and gentlemen, we have him with a one-point lead over Cooper. Cooper takes second. He looks tired. He looks exhausted. A blistering pace. Could only manage second. LaRocco finishes third. Tishner fourth. Buddy Antonez fifth. So there you go, a one-point lead by Kudrowski over Cooper going into the final round. We'll be back. Don't go away. Larry Huffman back with you at Bud's Creek, Maryland, ladies and gentlemen, for the final 500 moto of the day as our intrepid power sports video crew checks out the local scenery. They're called East Coast girls as compared to West Coast girls. Earlier, we had a chance to go to the pits, talk to Ricky Johnson, ask him what was going through his mind. Here's Ricky. Right now, I'd like to win one of the last two races. Uh, this year has sort of been a disaster with, with my hand injury, and uh, I haven't performed very well in the 500s. So I'd like to end the, the American season with a good note. I've had some good finishes over in Europe, but uh, I'd like to go out with a win here in the States. How's your wrist feel now? It's a little sore out there. The track is pretty demanding on, on different joints in your body, you know, with the big jumps and downhills. but. Uh, 
I think we made some changes on the suspension, and I feel confident going into the next practice and into the first moto that uh, I can ride fast and I can ride up there with the leaders. Ricky Johnson, a great competitor. you got to wonder what the top competitors do to work off tension between motos where there is Stanton and Ward kind of joking with each other and talking about everything but what they're going to be trying to do to each other in just a few moments. Jeff Ward with a great smile. And Jeff Stanton with a great smile also. And here's Johnny O'Mara, ladies and gentlemen, in the twilight of a great career. You wonder how long O'Mara will continue to race. He's been on top before. All right, on the line now, ready for the second and final 500 moto. There is Stan, there's O'Mara, there's Ricky Johnson. It's warm here in Maryland. Mechanics uh, fanning the riders, and you got to wonder what's going through Ricky's mind right now. Well, there you go. It looks like Jeff's doing a little praying. <laughs> he DNF'd last week, and he was second to Ward in the first moto. Let's see what happens. Here we go. The second and final 500 moto underway. And it is... Looks like a Honda. It looks like Stanton. Jeff Stanton pulls another hole shot as he did in the first moto. And the riders take off after him. The second and final 500 moto. And Ward is sitting right in his shadow in second spot. Looks like Johnson in third. Yes, it is Stanton, Ward, and Johnson. One, two, three. O'Mara up in there trying to, trying to join the fray. But Stanton, who led the first moto, went down. You saw it earlier. Washed out a simple get-off, and that cost him valuable points, and Ward motored around him and went on for the win. So here we go. Stanton in front, Ward running second, Johnson running third. Mickey Diamond, who has been in semi-retirement, trying to move up in fourth spot or fifth spot at this point. We'll try to watch that. Diamond, who was the AMA Rookie of the Year a few years ago. There is a, a rider who is uh, certainly marches to a different drummer, Mickey Diamond, a very, very talented young lad, but very, very different. Meanwhile, out in front it is Stanton, still holding on to the lead, and Wardy running in second spot. There you have it. There's Stanton, number two, and there's Ward, number one. Beautiful fall foliage here in Maryland. A beautiful day. A little warm, but not that bad. Stanton tries to get around that corner, a little bit different line, but Wardy is sticking right on his back tire. Johnson sitting in third, watching the battle. The crowd has got their money's worth, and if you've never seen a, moto, a national championship motocross in person, you owe it to yourself to go out and at least see one. They're all across the country, and it makes a great day of entertainment. Wardy trying to get up on Stanton. He's pushing Stanton. This could be a problem. Pushing Stanton early. He goes to the inside, Stanton to the outside, and Ward says, I come to race. Let's get it on. But Stanton is holding Ward off at this point. Whoa. Stanton slows way down, feet off the pegs, or off one peg there, and there's Johnson right on Ward's back tire. And there's number 21 right behind them, Mickey Diamond. Diamond has gone into fourth. You could call Diamond kind of a modern-day hippie. He doesn't really care about a lot of material things. He's, I would almost go as far as to call him kind of a flower child. Very intelligent, came to the Meadowlands race a few couple years ago with a brand new tattoo. Not a biker tattoo, just, I don't forget what it was actually, but uh, Diamond is currently running in fourth. Semi-retirement, although he's very, very young. Meanwhile, it is still Jeff Stanton and still Jeff Ward. And as Ricky said earlier, his wrist is bothering him. He'd like to win one more moto this year. Some talk of Johnson going to Europe next year. And make no bones about it, Ricky's a proud young man, and he'd like to win another, another overall moto where he'll settle for a moto win. It's been a while. Wardy continues to keep the pressure on Stanton. Two different lines. And John, uh, Ward is good at this at stalking the rider in front and trying to pressure him to make a mistake. Yeah, that's what happened in the first moto when Stanton apparently suffered brain fade and just went down. Wash out, just went down fast and Wardy went by. And Wardy is keeping the pressure on Stanton. Ward's got a good lead over Stanton in this, going into the second and final moto. One race left, one national championship race left. I'm Larry Huffman on the microphone here from Bloods Creek, Maryland, Potomac Speedway.
Wardy keeping the pressure on Stanton. Johnson trying to keep Ward in sight, but I think that wrist is giving him trouble. Look at Ward. Stay right on the back wheel of Jeff Stanton. Two different lines. Stanton on the outside. Ward on the inside. Is he going to pass? Ward gets right up on him, and Ward goes down. Well, son of a gun. Wardy tried to do the same thing he did in the first moto, and Stanton says no way, and Wardy goes down. They locked handlebars. Ward might have been trying a little bit too early and went down. Johnson goes into second. O'Mara goes into third, and now Wardy has got to come back up. Let's see what happened. Excellent camera work. Now watch what happens. They are. It looked like they just tangled handlebars and went down. Just exactly what they did, and there, goodbye, Jeff. And Jeff goes over the berm, and it's so long. Good night, Wardy. And Stan has got to be saying, well, I showed that little devil something right there. Paid him back for the first one. Meanwhile, remember, Johnson has gone by, and so has O'Mara. There's Johnson now. So Wardy finds himself in fourth. And suddenly, the points are slipping away from Jeff. Johnson is in second. Number 13, Ricky Johnson. They say you've never seen anybody break dance like Johnson. I've never seen him, but they say at parties he can really break dance. Ricky does a fine Michael Jackson impersonation. Well, Wardy's coming back up and trying to fight his way back, back up toward the front. Let's see what happens. Ricky Johnson trying to hold on to second behind his teammate Jeff Stanton. Johnson, if he should get close to Stanton, which I don't think he will, will not do anything stupid. They're teammates, and Johnson says knows there's no way that he can win the national 500 championship. Ward has gone to second, or third. He has passed O'Mara and gone to third. And Wardy is going after Johnson. Johnson's job will be to block Ward at every turn and give Stanton some, some breathing space and hopefully a win in this moto, which would give Stanton the overall by virtue of his second place finish to Ward in the first moto. So Ricky's job is to block Jeff Ward, but that is not an easy job and not an easy thing to do because Wardy is tough. There's your leader, Jeff Stanton, on the factory Honda in front. 250 and Supercross champion and looking to wrap up the 500 National Championship. Sports Channel coverage of this AMA 125 and 500 National Championship. There's Johnson in second. You saw him a moment ago. Now, Wardy puts the pressure on, on Johnson. That's Wardy on the left, Johnson on the right. Wardy flat track around the turn and he, I don't know if he's got him, but it's close. Yes, he has got Johnson for second. And Jeff Ward sets out for Stanton. The second and final moto. Stanton was leading the first one. He washed out on a simple downhill. Wardy went by and motored away for the win. Stanton had to settle for second. Valuable points lost by Stanton. And now Wardy, who tried to push perhaps too hard against Stanton too early in the moto, found himself on his head over a burn as they locked handlebars. He and Stanton, he went down. Johnson passed him, O'Mara passed him, Ward got up, shook himself off and says, okay, boys, I come to race. And went back and passed O'Mara and passed Johnson, and now Wardy is gaining on Stanton. Ricky Johnson still in third. Stan looks around behind him. No, there, I believe, Ward, you could just see him in the back there as Stanton went by. The rut's getting deep here in Butts Creek, Maryland. The final moto, I think it looks like Stanton might pull this one off and a first overall. There's Wardy, quite a ways back now, and it's a, a pretty strong lead that Stanton has. But never count Jeff Ward out. He is one tough little cookie.
Stanton heading for the checkered flag, and he has got it. Jeff Stanton takes it home. And Ward will have to settle for second. And third spot should be Johnson. But Ward still has a big lead unofficially. Well, let's check the reader board. And let's see where they stand on the points going into the final round. Stanton wins, Ward second, Johnson, then O'Mara, then Gene Nomick, who did well in the first moto also. We'll be back in just a moment with a recap on the points. Don't go away. The 500-point standings now. Jeff Ward, 236. Stanton, second with 210. Let's go to Jeff Stanton. Second moto, basically started out the same. Got a good hole shot. And uh, just Jeff Ward was up there. We had, was racing pretty good. And he tried to pass me in on an outside line. And, uh, you know, I wasn't going to let him pass me on an outside line. So I just basically, you know, pushed him out. You know, nothing real aggressive or anything. It was in a slow corner. And he stalled his bike and went back to fourth. And, uh... From then on, it was just kind of be out front, ride smooth and consistent and not push it too hard. And uh, Rick Johnson was behind me for a while pushing me and I kind of pulled away from him. And, and Jeff was coming up and then I made a charge at the end and, you know, won by seven, eight seconds at the end of the race. Yeah, I had a little bit of a trouble, you know, getting around Antonez and uh, LaRocco. LaRocco was probably one of the hardest riders to get around coming down the downhill. I was on the inside and he was on the outside. He cut over a little bit, but not enough to the inside. And, I ended up pushing him.